In this video, I want to share with you really the best keyword tools that I've found in my experience now really running ads on Bing now for over really a year now and really getting the hang of it. And then on top of that too, also, of course, using Google AdWords as well, and then really kind of figure out, hey, what are the best websites to find these keywords? Because keywords, again, are really important for your ads. Now, of course, now we just kind of, the previous video quickly went over then the keyword planner on Bing ads. And of course, that's going to be probably one of the most valuable tools for you to use, of course. However, there are a couple more that I want to show you as well within this lesson here. So first, just a quickly then, just review over the keyword planner. I want to go a little bit more in depth with it now, which is of course here on top when you, it's a good, good place when you have an idea of exactly what kind of copy or what kind of keywords you're trying to rank for. This is going to be a, a good place to obviously search them, get suggestions, and then Bing will naturally then give you some ideas that are going to be very similar to what you typed in. And you'll also be able to see suggested bids. So this would be the cost per click of what you should expect to pay per click. Now, is it exactly it? Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's less. It does fluctuate over time. However, what you'll find is for the most part, it stays about the same. You're not going to see a keyword really that you're trying to, you know, it's 36 cents and then next week it's going to be $50. You just never see that. So keep that in mind as far as like they might be a little bit up, it might be a little bit down as far as the actual cost per click, but it'll be literally pennies different. Difference. So it'll be about the same. Another thing too that I want to show you too is that you gotta keep in mind the actual things that are involved here with the keyword planner, such as like search volume trends. So sometimes for certain keywords, they're gonna be better in other months than you know others. So for an example here for March, as you can see here, there was a lot of people searching for this exact you know, keyword right here. However, as you can see, it kind of goes down over time. So does that mean that it's a bad one? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It just simply means that you shouldn't expect as many results coming, say, September through maybe February, for an example, or maybe January. Well, actually, yeah, February. So that's just something to expect. But if you want to see higher results, then, you know, March and April and May are going to be your pretty prime times for the specific keyword of, like, cheap microphones. So... To kind of give you an idea, I don't go super in depth with this when I'm looking for keywords. This is not as big as a deal for me personally, but I do want to share this with you just so that you know about it. Something too that's going to be incredibly important actually, and I've actually had to learn this on the really kind of the hard side, I guess you could say, which is make sure really whatever kind of audience you're trying to attract, make sure that you're doing it within the right, you know, demographics and then also um, sometimes even um, the like the geographics as well. So if you are, say are a business then you know within the United States, you want to definitely make sure that you're sorting your targeting here by the United States. Here I'll click this so you kind of get an idea exactly what I'm talking about. But really what you want to be able to do is then be able to then you know target people that are in fact you know in the United States as it says here. And if you wanted maybe even a more specific location or maybe even a different location, you could just type that in here and it'll come up with those answers. In addition to that as well, if you, for whatever reason, didn't want the United States in here, you could remove it here. However, you just got to make sure that you're attracting the right audience because you don't want people, if you're, say, a business in the United States and you only ship products within the United States, well, then you don't want to be having ads being showing up in different countries. So you got to keep that in mind as well. Next, then we want to go over then is obviously just quickly looking over these things. Usually you don't have to put much in here. At least I have not. However, if you have specific keywords that you absolutely do not want into your, like, say your ads or the things that are popping up, you would put them in what's called negative keywords. So an example, this could be, uh, let's see, motorcycle for an example, because if I was say going back to like my bike store, hypothetically, I do want nothing to do with motorcycles since I'd be more like a bicycle kind of a store. So you want to want to make sure about, you know, having that negative keywords, especially if your certain market is like that, where it's like could get confused with people, you will probably want to add negative keywords. On the flip side to this, if I was say like, a shop that sold motorcycles, then I would want to make sure that I put the negative keyword of say like bicycles and things of that sort, like mountain bike, things of that sort. That way then really at, like being ads won't get confused with what you're looking for. So that's really when you use then the negative keywords. In this case, I'll cancel that because that's not needed for me currently. Next is then the data range. I usually don't touch this. Usually this is plenty good for me within the last year as far as showing the results. I think that's a great indicator of what to know about. Next is this actually can be incredibly important as well, which is then 
keyword fillers, filters, which is this. So if you're looking to target a certain audience, say you don't want it to be less competitive, so maybe you want less than 300 people, say, searching for it, or, um, say searching for it a month, then you could do something along the lines of this, or even better yet, if you're looking to spend a certain amount of money as far as like, you know, I want it to be, let's just say, I don't want to spend anything more than a dollar a click or something of that sort. And obviously then obviously make sure then you don't put a dollar sign in. There you go. And then I usually don't do anything for this, but I would say something like save, but I'm gonna actually increase this a slight bit amount to see if that helps. I'm gonna say save and let's see what it comes up with. So in this case, for my specific keyword that I was looking up, nothing has shown up. So what do you do in that case? Well, something really simple. You just kind of go back here and kind of play with the keywords a little bit and kind of find, you know, which ones people are searching for, which you might be thinking, well, that sounds real nice, Brennan, but how do you do that? How do you find the keywords that are pe people are searching for? And that's actually where my next tools really come into play and where they can be really helpful. So let me show you that now. But the last thing I want to kind of leave you with here is then, of course, if then the results did come up, then you would have really some of the things that exactly are what you're looking for as far as like the specific keywords that meet your criteria criteria is here. So that's where it's really nice as well. So let me show you really how you get ideas of what keywords you should use. So the first one that I want to show you is called KeywordTool.io. It is a free website. It does offer like a paid version, but that's really not needed, especially when you have really especially when you have say like Bing's keyword planner so what you want to do is naturally goes to Google but instead you'll want to click on to Bing and what you'll want to do instead is then go to cheap microphone or something of that sort to try and get an idea of exactly what are people typing in really Let's see if I could type mic pro phone there you go and then I want to then enter that in and whatnot and then what's going to pop up th then is then all their keyword suggestions so this is based on what actually people are typing into say Bing so what is you know what are the next things people say so this can be another great way to help you get ideas on exactly hey what should I be trying to target maybe my keywords for and things of that sort and even this is actually another great tool as well if you're trying to like write articles maybe for your website and try to figure out hey what should I put in my titles on my articles this is another great tool you can use as well for it so as you can see here this gives you a lot of different ideas so people are looking for microphone stands so that could give you an idea possibly of what people are looking for and let's see speakers and maybe microphones specifically for their like computers or PCs things of that sort so as you can see this gives you a lot of great ideas and what I found in my experience here is that usually the ones on top are the ones that are most popular the ones all the way here at the bottom aren't quite as popular most of the time now as you can see here this part is like the paid section but as you can see the search volume the cost per click and competition all of that you can get for free on like the, the Bing keyword planner. So you can, you, you really, it's not needed to have the paid tool, but this can help you give you a lot of great ideas. And that's, this is a website that I use a lot and I think this can really help you too. And then the last one that I want to show you here, it's a little bit weird in the, in the design, but it's called answerthepublic.com. And what you're able to do is say, type in, I'm going to just say microphone here. Can't type today. Microphone get questions and this is going to be coming up with like keywords that people are looking for questions that people are answering about the topic you can get more specific than this this is pretty broad I'll admit but what, you're, what this is going to do is going to do kind of all the background work for you and what you'll be able to do as you can see here this is a lot of different information right here now don't get overwhelmed this is actually really great because what you're able to do is you can also sort by the data of it and what this is going to do is make it real nice and easy for you as far as here's some questions that people are looking for and this can help give get you ideas of what keywords maybe you should add into your say your your ads really and this can really help you a lot and it because i know that it's really helped me as well and the great thing about this is it's 100 percent free too so there's a i mean it gives you so much information and you can you can go even more specific than this as well so this is a great tool to use as well. Again, this is then called answerthepublic.com. So hope that this video has been able to help you really get ideas as far as finding keywords and how you can really go about that, how to use a Google, the Bing 
keyword planner, and then also how to use some other tools too that I've used and had success with as well. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.